thank you very much, folks. I, I really must make get here earlier next time. <laughs> this is one that I've had a request for, but um, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. <laughs> so uh, this is dedicated to Adonis, and it's called the Reverend's Bike. Oh yeah. Now the Reverend was an humble man that everybody liked. He made his bells of folly and rode everywhere on his bike. <laughs> An old main machine had seen better days, as had the Reverend. With dodgy brakes and a wonky wheel, well, he just couldn't be bothered to mend it. <laughs> the church roof had hold in it, so we had a sponsored oak. The Reverend led from the start, striding out as hard as you like. <laughs> as soon as he was out of sight, he jumped onto his bike. <laughs> that had been left there hidden by his verger, Mucky Mike. <laughs> Now, being such an humble man, the Reverend sacked us all, and we had a little party after in the village hall. We still hadn't raised enough, so we planned a charity ball. That was so much to organise that we had to share it all. The Reverend said he'd do his share with the widow, Mrs. Wright. <laughs> <laughs> there was so much for them to do that, well, they, they carried on at night. <laughs> You should have seen the Reverend, he was such a funny sight. <laughs> with his cassock tucked in with his socks and his, and his wobbly headlight. <laughs> you can imagine the shock that we all felt when someone stole the Reverend's bike. <laughs> he was quite distressed, as you can tell. He had to borrow the Verge's trike. <laughs> when Sunday came and he preached about the deadly sins, uh, we all knew what he meant. <laughs> then he switched to a tirade about adultery. But he stopped short and he just upped and went. He ran down the stairs and out the door and leapt upon the Verge's trike. Because when he preached about adultery, he remembered where he parked his bike. of paper in it. I'm sure I'll stick in the wrong place. <laughs> Here we go. So now I'm sure this will be familiar to most, well not most of you perhaps, but um, those of you who are songwriters or poets or whatever you like to call yourself, this is called Writer's Block. I woke up this morning with the buzzing in my head. I had some words all jumbled up. Was it something that I read? I had the inklings of a tune so I started humming. I hummed until my lips were sore, there was nothing coming. I knew I had a song there and I looked at the clock. It was four in the morning, my brain was in a lock. I knew I wouldn't get back to sleep, but nothing was forthcoming. I could see the chords, but not the words, and my brain was still humming. I got out of bed, I got out of bed and went downstairs to make a cup of tea. I knew I had a song there, but it wouldn't come to me. I tried out all the old tricks, rewriting what I could. All I got was something sounding just like Johnny B. Good. I went into the other room and strummed on my guitar. I propped it so I bent the strings, but all I got was la la la. <laughs> so that's it, I'm giving up. I've tried for far too long. So I'm going out of chambers without a bloody song. <laughs> Encouraged by the response, this one's called Hard Blues, and uh, you'll see why. I was out with one woman just the other day. She wanted to shop, but I wanted to lay. I said, come on, honey, my fires are cooking. She said, just a minute, because I'm still looking. I said, now, come on, honey, I'm taking you home. i got to exercise my loving bone. She said, sugar, you will get that out of your head. You ain't getting me back in your bed. I said, come on, honey, I want you right now. I've got the need, I'll show you how. She said, sugar, you want me in your sack? You're going to have to give me something back. <laughs> I said, well, okay, I'll buy your dress. Now come home with me, because I'm in distress. <coughs> we went back to my house, and I loved her hard. She said, now you get out your credit card. <laughs> I said, you gotta be joking. I 
ain't gonna pay for no fire stoking. He says, yeah, you said you would. Buy me a coat for being so good. I laughed and I told her, woman, I'll tell you right now and I'll tell you quite often. I say yes when I'm hard and no when I soften. <laughs> Copies of the book are still available. <laughs>